Welcome to the Santa Rosa JC Distance Ed Department. This video workshop is on using visuals in your course. What we'll focus on for this workshop is why visuals are important and also some tips for how to select visuals for your Canvas course. In addition, I'm going to show you how to find images and to make sure that the images you choose online are images you can actually use, uh, such as from free image sites or images that are in the public domain or Creative Commons. I'm also going to show you how you can use Google to find images that don't violate copyright, as well as the pros and cons of, of doing this. Then we'll take a look at how to insert images into Canvas, uh, embedding them in pages, assignments, and quizzes. Um, and I'm also going to cover uh, what if you need to attribute an image, uh, such as in Creative Commons, how to do that. Let's talk about the concept of visuals first. Why are visuals so important? And you can see the visual chosen here is of an adorable kitty cat, and it makes us smile. It's also a very well composed visual, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, but it makes us smile and it's bright and happy and sort of engages us. But let's talk about some specifics of why visuals are important. So images, as you've heard the term, a picture's worth a thousand words. Images say more than a thousand words. Images can convey so much in an instant. And so if you use the right image or an image that really fits with what you're trying to do, it can be very powerful to get across concepts, to get across information, and to get across tenor and tone, etc. So images can be a really powerful way for you to communicate with your students. Whether your course is asynchronous or whether it's synchronous and you're using online for supplement, uh, no matter what, images really can enhance the learning experience. Well-chosen images can be, as I said, engaging, memorable, expressive, relaxing, explanatory. They can help students understand things. They can be funny. They can get, provide a bit of levity. Uh, so they can do all kinds of things that words just it would take too many to get there. All right, so hopefully I've convinced you to use images in your courses. So let's talk about some specific ideas for how to do that. First, pick simple images. Less is definitely more when it comes to images. As you can see, the image on the right here is a stack of stones. Now, it's very simple. The colors are pretty uniform. Um, there's not a background. In fact, there's no background at all. So the stones really are focused on. Uh, so it's a very simple, straightforward, clean image. Try humorous images if you if you think that's appropriate. Uh, humor can be very memorable, very engaging. Uh, for example, the two images you see here, uh, the image on the left, the little uh, cappuccino monkey, is like, oh my gosh. So think about where you might use an image like that, uh, like when you're trying to express surprise or or wow, what a that's a cool concept. Can you believe it? Uh, so there are lots of moments in education where this image might be appropriate. And uh, the image on the right, uh, a little girl who fell asleep on her bread, um, you can also use this to sort of engage with the students. Uh, you know, I know you're exhausted, you've got a lot going on, but stay with me and, we're, you know, whatever you, the case may be. But you can use images to sort of connect with, help uh, show that you understand, or to guide students in a certain direction. One hugely important point to remember is uh, to intentionally and, and deliberately and be in awareness of using diversity in your images. Uh, you want to reflect the students who are in front of you. And that means to reflect different ethnicities, different groups, different genders, different abilities, different ages, uh, all of the gamuts of demographics. You want to uh, be as thoughtful as possible about ensuring that your images are reflecting uh, a diversity of of different, uh, you know, aspects of our community so that people feel welcome and included and see themselves in the images that you convey. Uh, so here are a couple of examples. And we have some websites that you can go to that specifically um, do focus on diversity in imagery. Uh, and also some of the free image sites, which we'll talk about, uh, you can search on, on diversity and they will help you find images you can hopefully use. 
And as I said before, images can convey meaning and emotion. So, for example, these two images, the images on the right, I mean, it's just screaming, yay! There's a person throwing their hands up in the air and there's glitter. It's just a happy, smiley moment. Something amazing happened. This person finished something or perhaps they are celebrating a moment of, of, of winning or anything like that. So that really conveys meaning and emotion. And on the left, you've got, uh, you know, a group group of adorable dogs in front of this nice bright pink wall, uh, group project, hey, let's get together, or hey, we're waiting for some cool thing to happen, but we're having a good time, we're hanging out. So you can you know, use that to say that maybe to indicate that you want the students to hopefully have that experience as well. So thinking about what exactly is it that your image is conveying, is that what you meant to convey? So here's an example of uh, how images are used inside a Canvas page, for example. So this is a Canvas page screenshot, and you can see that an image is placed on the left, and then we have uh, a nice big headline. Uh, we've got a subheader that's a different color, and then it's telling us what's going to happen. Oh, we're off. We're going to get oriented to the course. And of course, that classic example of a race. We're off. Here we go. We're 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 starting this race. We're starting this this process. So that image is very active. Uh, very you know it conveys a lot of energy. And hopefully the students will pick up on that and move forward. So this is one example of how you might use an image in an overview page, for example. Uh, something to think about also is uh, you don't want to use images for the sake of using images. You want to make sure that they actually have meaning and uh, make sense. And sometimes people rely on clip art, cheesy clip art, and we want to avoid that because that can just kind of get in the way. It can make the page feel a little cheap sometimes. It used to be the thing, but... I think we've kind of moved on from that. So if you're doing, you know, global warming, maybe consider uh, a landscape image of uh, environments that have been affected rather than some sort of clip art uh, like the one you see here. Also with clip art, uh, if you're going to use clip art, make sure the clip art matches. It's from the same artist or it's got a similar feel to it. Uh, the clip art here on this page, none of it really matches. And so it's going to feel a little disjointed. Uh, there's a great website that I will have at the end of this uh, that... Um, that has clip art, some of it's free, some of it's behind a paywall, but you can find clip art that you like and then see what else that artist has done to help you get cohesive clip art. Another thing to think about with images is be sure the resolution is high quality. Um, the resolution means the amount of pixels in the width to height. So, for example, you've heard 1920 by 1080. That's high resolution image. That's 1920 pixels across and 1080 pixels high or up down. And that's how many pixels are uh, contained in uh, that line. And so the more pixels packed into an inch, the higher the resolution of your image. When you look at the images here on the screen, you can see that the one on the left is a low resolution image. It probably looked fine when it was small, but when you blow it up, there aren't enough pixels to keep the image looking crisp and smooth. And those pixels have to spread out and do more work. Thus, the image gets blurry and hazy, and it's not high quality at all. And that looks really bad. So you want to avoid small, low resolution images. So if you see something like 100 by 100, 100 or 220 by 220, that's low resolution. You want to avoid that. A nice place to be, sort of the low end of a nice place to be, is maybe 600 by 800 or 800 by 600. Um, and then you don't need to actually go too high. Like 1920 by 1080 is a nice high place to be. The higher the resolution you get, so if you get to like 4,000 by 6,000, the longer that image is going to take to load on the page. So there is a sweet spot. You definitely want to err on the side of higher quality, higher resolution, but you um, also have to think about image loading time if it's too big. Um, on the right, we have another issue. We have uh, in the center there an image out of proportion. Uh, and in this case, you can see the, the correct image is on the top right. But on the in the middle there at the bottom, you can see that image looks to have been squished uh, so that the faces of the animals look thinner. Um, and it basically lost its aspect ratio. Uh, there was a height to width relationship that was broken because the image was shrunk uh, 
the width of the image was shrunk and the height stayed the same. Avoid that as well. If you accidentally do that to an image, you can just hit Command Z or Undo to get right back to where you were. Um, but, but be careful about that because that's going to look funny on a page. So now that we've talked about all the don't do this, let's talk about uh, an example of an effective image. So effective images have, you know, high quality, and they also have some composition that um, some composition tricks that you can you know, look for. One is uh, the rule of thirds. So you can see those first two images have a grid on them. And it's basically two vertical lines and two horizontal lines splitting the image into, you know, three columns and three rows. And the rule of thirds is used in photography and videography to place important aspects of a visual on one of those lines and really important aspects on the intersections where the lines intersect. So on that first image there uh, is from Bryce Canyon. And you can see that the, um, the figure is along the left third line and it's right along there. And then the, um, the, the vista goes sort of back. And you also take a look, the horizon or an anhori horizon uh, between some of, the, some of the formations and the distant mountains, that's also on a third line. I mean, now the, it's not the sky, but it's another horizon. It's on a third line as well. So this is a well-composed image and someone thought about putting uh, elements on the third lines. By the same token, that next image with the grid line is also uh, really well composed. You can see that the figure, the person, is along the right uh, third line this time. And the eye and that part of the face is right there on the corner. And that just gives it a little bit more importance. Also, the hand, the, the hand that's reaching out is on that lower left corner, on that lower left intersection, uh, which also gives it some meaning and some importance and some attention. So that's a really well-composed image. Also, the lighting on these images is very nice. Uh, the lighting is clean. There aren't all too many shadows. Um, and it looks, uh, and there, you can see that the back is in soft focus uh, so that you can really see the figure in front. Um, another effective image is the next one with the woman looking at the computer. It's very well lit. Even though her back is to us, we still see her face and we see the action happening on the screen. Uh, so that's a well composed image. Again, the first image on the lower left has nice lighting um, and it's well composed as well. If you put third lines on that, it would look pretty good. Um, this square image of the light bulb, um, that's a square image. Now, now, composition works a little bit different on a square image. It sort of goes in a circle rather than lines. But that light bulb is fairly well composed inside the square space. So that's also well composed. And it's, it's clean, simple, uh, bright color, not too in your face, and well lit. Uh, the image of the dog raising its hand um, is, again, a simple image, not too much going on in the background and well composed. That center composition can be really effective. And finally, you have an image of people laughing and talking, and uh, you've got some good lighting there, some nice composition. So when you're looking for effective images, think about rule of thirds at first. Think about, is it cleanly lit or well lit? Uh, does it work for me? Alrighty, so the next step, now that we've talked about do's and don'ts and a little bit of hows, we're going to talk about finding visuals online. So the first thing you want to do uh, is think about where you're getting your images. So the images that we're allowed to use are, one, are they in the public domain? And the, that means that uh, they've been put out into the world and you can use them without crediting anyone. Generally, anything that the, uh, the U.S. government takes, so national parks, NASA, all of that, those are all in the public domain because they're paid for by taxpayer dollars, so they belong to us, the taxpayers. Other images in the public domain are images that are a bit older. Uh, the general rule of thumb is life of the author plus 75 years. There are some changes in the law or some extensions, um, but something goes into the public domain after a certain amount of time. Or someone might intentionally choose to put something in the public domain. And you'll look for when you're searching images, it'll say public domain or it'll say CC0. If you see CC0, that's in the public domain. I'm going to jump to three. If the images are yours, you can also use them because they're yours and you don't have to attribute unless you want to, um, but you can do anything you want with your own images. And then finally, Creative Commons. Creative Commons is something that's been created. It was created uh, a little while ago uh, by a guy named Lawrence Lessig out of Stanford. 
basically to make it a little bit more streamlined into how we share and use images that are out there. So what happens, and I'll show it to you in a minute, but what happens is you go to the Creative Commons website, uh, or you go anywhere you, where you can find Creative Commons images, and you can actually search, hey, I'm looking for uh, this specific image, and I see it, and I can look, and there's a license associated with it, and that license uh, will tell me how I can use it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Before we jump into the how to do that, I want you to think about some things for yourself. When you're searching for images, think about these things. What might appeal to your target audience? In this case, I'm guessing it's your students. Um, think about, you know, age range, age group, region, ethnicity, uh, interest, et cetera. Uh, so think about that. And then use keywords to reflect the concept you're trying to find. And you may not find what you want on the first go around. For example, if I want pictures for online learning, I'm going to type in online learning and see what I get. And chances are I'm not going to get much that's good. So I'm like, shoot, how else can I, how else can I represent online learning visually? I don't know, student at a computer, desk, laptop, uh, I don't know, you know, so thinking about different keywords, different phrases that might get me to what I'm really trying to find. As I said before, pay attention to that image size, make sure it's high quality, look for that clean composition and even lighting, and beware of copyright and licensing, which we're going to take a look at. So now we're going to get into it. We're going to find images, and I'm going to show you um, three different ways. One, we're going to look at free image sites. There are a ton out there. I'm only mentioning a couple of here, but there are so many. Unsplash, Pexels, PX here, Pixabay, on and on and on and on and on. Uh, then we're going to go to Creative Commons sites so I can show you what it's like to look for a Creative Commons image. I'm going to show you creativecommons.org and Flickr. Um, and then finally, we're going to look at uh, strategies for how to find legal images on Google. Okay, so I've gone to a free website. I've gone to unsplash.com. Now, Unsplash is one of many free sites. Let's say I really want a picture of dogs. So I'm going to type in dogs and I'm going to hit go. Now, as far as I know, anything on this site, I am allowed to use. So I can go through and I can look. There's that cute picture of the dogs waiting that we saw in the presentation. I love this image of the dog staring up at its its person and licking his lips. Um, so, uh, this is a great image. You know, actually online learning, this might represent it really well. So I want you to notice this one is under Unsplash Plus. Unsplash Plus is a uh, recent development where Unsplash is putting some photos behind a paywall. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use that one, um, which is sad, but it does happen. So just be aware of that. I will continue to look. So that's adorable. This one's adorable. I think I'm going to use the image of the three dogs looking at us. So I'll click on it. Um, and they ask you, they, this is the person who created the image or who took the image and they do recommend or ask that you credit them. And it is nice to do it. And I try to do that, but you don't have to, this image is in, in the public domain. You can take it and use it without crediting. So I'm going to go ahead and I can click download, but just to show you, they actually give me several options for which size I want to download. And if you remember what I said, uh, you want something that's high enough resolution to look high quality, but not too high that it takes a long time to load. So I'm going to stay away from 640 by 400. That would look fine small, but what if I want some more um, versatility with this image? This 1920 by 1200, that's, you know, they say that's medium, but that's actually a nice large image. And I also know that that will load in a good amount of time. So I'm going to go for this one, 1920 by 1200. I'm going to avoid this 2560 by 1600. That's not crazy big. It's, it's really nice, but it just might take a little too long to load. So I'll click on that. And we're going to load this into a canvas page in a bit. But I don't have to credit this at all. I can just use it. So this is how you find images on a free image site. And again, we're going to go to canvas in a few minutes. And I'll show you how to engage with these images in that space. Let me now show you Creative Commons. Creative Commons, again, is a place where you can share your own work if you want and tell people how they're allowed to use it, or you can find work. So I first want to pretend like we're going to share some work so you can see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and click share your work here. 
And if you want to share your work but be uh, credited for that work, then you basically have to answer two questions to choose your license. So I'll click Get Started. And I scroll down and you can see on the left here, I have two questions to ask. Uh, do I want to allow adaptations and do I want to allow commercial uses? Before I get to that, look on the right. Right now, without me doing anything at all, the selected license is the Attribution 4.0 International. And you can see there are two icons. The CC icon, which tells us this is a Creative Commons image, and that's on every Creative Commons image, no matter what the license. And the Attribution icon, which again is on every image in, you know, of, that is Creative Commons. And that just means you need to attribute. If you use this image, you must attribute. That's what that means. And I also want to point out, this is a bit technical, but um, for what it's worth, that 4.0 is sort of uh, the license has been updated in, uh, over the years. Anything that's a 1.0 or a 2.0, there was a loophole where someone could take their image out of Creative Commons at any time. And that got a little dicey because then people could sue someone who previously thought they were using a Creative Commons image. So I would encourage you to stick with the attribution 3.0 or 4.0 level. Um, it's not going to be the end of the world if you use something that's earlier, um, but just kind of be aware that that was, um, that was uh, reported on uh, in the past couple of years. But this is your standard license. And I want you to notice that in this license, I am saying, yes, I want to allow adaptations of my work to be shared, meaning someone can change it. They can play with it. They can be artistic with it. They can crop it. I also say uh, yes to allowing commercial uses of my work, meaning that some commercial business could grab it and use it and I won't get paid, but they have to attribute. So what if I make uh, changes to those questions. So what if I say, no, I don't want to allow commercial uses of my work? Well, notice what happened when I clicked no, a third icon appeared. Now that icon is a little dollar sign with a no symbol, meaning no commercial uses of my work. So if you see that dollar sign and you're a business, you can't use it. Now, education institutions, we're fine. We can use, uh, we can use visuals that uh, have this symbol because we are an educational institution, uh, but just to be aware of what it means. Okay, now you can see that there are actually three options up here. I've covered yes. Uh, let me go back to yes to allow commercial uses so we simplify the right. What if I said no, I don't want to allow adaptations of my work to be shared, meaning you can't change it. Then you're gonna see that equal sign. The equal sign means this is the image you can use and you have to use it as is. You cannot make changes. Um, if I say, sure, people can change it, but they have to use the same license, they have to share alike, use the same license I chose, then you're going to see that little uh, circular arrow saying, yeah, you can adapt it, but make sure you use this same license when you share it. So I know that that's somewhat technical, but I just did, I wanted to go over uh, what all the licensing means before we got into finding an image. Okay, so let's go to use and remix. Let's say we're going to find an image. Uh, and let's say, I, you know, I still want an image of dogs. So I am going to go ahead and uh, search the commons. Please note that uh, I search dogs without making any other filters. And I'm getting all kinds of things. I'm getting images. I'm getting audio. There may even be some video in here. Because anything artistic or creative can go into creative commons. Um, also, uh, so I could just filter by image. Um, if I want to, I'll just say see all images. There we go. And note over here on the right that maybe I only want to look at public domain images. So um, I could click on that and all of a sudden only CCO public domain images show up. Or if I, you know, have just a specific license in mind, I can, I can uh, do this. Or what if I want to use it commercially or I want to modify it? I can filter that way as well. So this is a great place to go to search for Creative Commons images. Um, and then I can take a look at what my options are. Um, I've got some, oh, look at this doggy running. I think, uh, I think that's the one. So I'll click on the doggy running with a ball, of course. And uh, then I see what's going on. I can get the image here, but first, let me look at the license. It's a CC by NC 2.0, which I, I gave a warning about, but I'm going to go ahead and use it for the uh, purposes of this class. And look, I have to credit the creator, which we knew, and it's non-commercial only. I'm still okay because I'm an educational institution. And they give me the attribution right here, which I can just copy and paste. Lovely. I'm going to talk about the attribution in a minute, but um, first, let's grab this image. So I'll say, get this image. And when I say get this image, it takes me over to Flickr, which may happen. 
Um, and that's fine. Or it might take me to Wikimedia Commons, which also may happen. They look very similar. So please note that um, if you see here, there's the Creative Commons license, some rights reserved. If it says some rights reserved, that means uh, the creator has reserved some of the rights, but you get some of the rights based on the Creative Commons license. If it says all rights reserved, that means the creator has reserved all the rights for themselves and you get none of them. So if you see all rights reserved, you can't use the image unless you get specific permission. Uh, you can ask the creator. Uh, you also see the creator's name is in this case, David Yu. And if I clicked on that, I would get to David Yu's uh, page with all of their photos. So there they are. These are all of David Yu's photos. Um, and... I can download the image on the bottom right here. So click and look again, I get all kinds of options for sizing. Now, unfortunately, this image doesn't have a nice big high res size. The uh, largest is 700 by 465, which isn't terrible, but it's not great. So I'm going to go ahead and get that largest one uh, because it's going to be the my best bet. And I will just remember not to use it as a big splashy image, I'll use it in a place where it'll remain on the smaller side. All right, so now I've gotten uh, the dog image. All right, let me show you one more thing about searching for images. And this is, of course, going to Google. Now, we might go to images.google.com and search dogs. Oh my gosh, look at all these dog pictures. But whoa, whoa, stop, stop, hold on. Stop. A lot of these images we cannot use. A lot of them are under copyright or royalty, or you'd have to pay to use them, etc. So we don't want to just jump in and use anything we see here. We want to filter it so that we know which images are Creative Commons or public domain. Here's how we do that. See this little uh, button under the right of the search bar? It says Tools. I'm going to click on Tools. And look at that. When I click on tools, I get a whole other submenu. And I'm going to click on usage rights. And you can see here, oh, look, I can filter by Creative Commons license. So tools, usage rights, Creative Commons licenses. So tools, usage rights, Creative Commons licenses. Once I click here, that's been filtered out. And now whatever I see, I can use. And uh, just to show you, look, there's some from Flickr, Wikimedia Commons, uh, Pexels, which is a free image site. Raw Pixel is another free image site. So, okay, all right. And there's some good images here. There's definitely something I can use. So I am gonna go ahead and grab maybe this cute, this guy right here, this little golden retriever. So I find this, uh, and you can see that there are the license details, but I'm going to go ahead and click visit just so you can see the full process here. And it takes me to Wikimedia Commons. Um, when I scroll down, uh, you can see that, oh, look, we've got, these are the resolutions that are available, uh, 1100 by 825 all the way down to 320 by 240. I'll go ahead and get the second largest or the largest, the 1024 by 768 it probably suits my needs. Um, 1100 by 25 would also be fine. It's not too big. Um, so I can click on those to get that. Um, I can also open it in the media viewer, which is going to give you a Flickr looking page. I'll do that in a minute, but take a look at this. You can find all the license information you need here. Um, I, the copyright holder of this work hereby publish it under the following license, creative commons, attribution, share alike 4.0 international, meaning, uh, you can remix it. See, I can share and I can share, I can adapt, but I have to use the same license. I must attribute and I must share alike. Um, so those are the licensing and you can click here to get to the license page, which looks like this. There it is. There's the license. And you can you have all the information you need about what you can do and what are the terms of this license. And that same information is going to be in the media viewer, which again looks like you saw in Flickr. See, this is Creative Co or Wikimedia Commons, but it looks like Flickr. Um, so I can download it here. Uh, there's the license link there. There's the name of the author there. So I can get all the same information and I can, you know, also click download and choose my size that I want. So I'll go ahead and choose original file. 
All right, so those are the different ways that you can search for images. So now that we found some images, let's take a look at using them in Canvas. So I'm going to show you how to insert images into the Canvas rich content editor, uh, which you know exists on pages, assignments, discussions, and quizzes. Okay, so I'm going to go to my, I'm, I'm here on Canvas and I'm going to go to my sandbox. And I'm going to go to pages and create a new page. All right, so I click new page and I'm going to call this test image, test image page. And I'm going to show you how to, uh, how to add an image here and how to attribute it if you uh, need to do that. So let's make, let's pretend this is a welcome page. Um, I look forward to working with you this semester. Um, I'll make welcome a heading. All right. So I want to add an image here. So I go up to the rich content editor and I find the little image icon, which is right here. I'm circling around it. And you can see that I can click on the image or I can click on this little down arrow carrot that's right next to it. Boom. Now I can upload an image. I can find an image I've already uploaded in courses, or I can find an image that I just have in my general user interface. I don't really use that option that much. I'm going to upload an image. And we downloaded a few doggy images. So I'm going to go find my doggy images. Um, and let's go ahead and use the dog breeds image. So I'm going to drag that on here. This was the one we found on Google. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that image. And whoa, when I uploaded it, it's awfully big. Look at that. It takes up the whole page, which maybe I want. Maybe that's exactly what I'm going for. Um, but if that's not what you're looking for, then you can click once on the image and you can see at the top, I get a little thing that says image options. When I click on image options, then I have some things I need to um, uh, configure. One is the alt text. For accessibility purposes, we don't want anything to say .jpg, .png, etc. And we want to describe the image. Dog breeds doesn't really describe the image. So I might say golden retriever puppy on grass or lying on grass. That's a more descriptive image. That way, someone who's visually impaired, when they hover over this image, the alt text will read out what the image is, and that person will be able to engage more deeply with the page. If the image really is a decorative image that means nothing and doesn't convey information that's, that needs to be conveyed, you can choose decorative image, and then it will tell the screen reader that nothing is there. It will just skip it, and that might be an option you want to do as well. Um, we're embedding the image, so that's fine. Right now it says size custom, 1028 by 771, which is, again, a nice a nice size. Uh, it's a little big for what we need, so maybe I look to large or medium. Now, it's not telling me what the pixels are, so if I choose large, it's 400 by 300. If I choose medium, it's 320 by 240. I'll choose large. Um, and that's, you know, again, I can downsize an image as much as I want, but you cannot take a small image and upsize it. So this is exactly what I want. I want to be able to downsize it or use it full size. I don't want to be limited uh, into, what I, into what I can do with the image. So then I'll click done. And now you look at that. The image got a lot smaller. So that's very cute. Um, now I might have more text and information on this page, but remember this is an image that was in Creative Commons. So I'm going to need to attribute it. Uh, so what I often do is you, is, um, I insert a little horizontal line and I'm going to put the attribution right here below the line. If I'm lucky, the attribution is easily found on the page. Uh, I don't see it here. And if I go back, uh, I'm not finding it here. Um, so that's all right. We can create the attribution, which is exactly what I want to teach you next. So if I go back to Creative Commons, they show you how to attribute uh, an image. So right here, this is a perfect attribution. Uh, this picture right here, uh, Ferglin Afterglow by Lucas, and forgive me, I can't say the last name, is licensed under CC by ND 2.0. And it includes the title of the image linked to the image where we got it, right? So linked back to 
the flickr.com page or the wikimedia.com's page the image where the the, the page where the image lives um, so the title is linked to the image the author right there and that's also linked and that's linked to their profile page uh, so remember when we went to David Yu's page we clicked and that's this is the profile page of the photographer so this would be linked to that person's name and finally the license with a link to the license page. So for example, this page right here, this is the Creative Commons license page. And you find that by clicking on some rights reserved or here clicking on the um, the Creative Commons attribution share alike link. Uh, so you can always find the license page. This is the perfect attribution right here. Sometimes, as in the case of the dog image, it might be created for you which is very exciting. Uh, so I found the dog image, remember, on uh, the Creative Commons open verse. And right here, it gave me this uh, perfect attribution, dog, linking to the dog's original page, by David U. Webb, linking to David U.'s profile page, is licensed under this license, linked to the license page. So for this picture here, uh, the golden retriever, I'm going to go ahead and go to the media viewer. And it was called Dog Breeds, right? So if I go back to Canvas, I can type in Dog Breeds by, and who was that? Dog Breeds by Hebrew Machio. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this because it has a link to that person's. Um, and then you can also, it's also acceptable to put the uh, license into a um, parentheses. So this was CC by SA 4.0. I'm going to go ahead and copy that because I know that links to the license. And boom, there it is. CC by SA 4.0. The only thing I need to link here is dog breeds because I copied and pasted the other links. So I'm going to go back to this file, which is the original file space for the dog breeds. And I'm going to click on the link, external link, paste that link in there. And now I have um, my perfect attribution. And maybe to set it apart from the rest of the content on the page, I might highlight it. I might even take it down to 10 point. Um, but I've got my attribution on the page. So this is how you add a photo to Canvas and properly attribute it. And I'll click Save to save my image. So now it's your turn to go find images on Canvas. We've got a nice write-up right in this presentation for you to refer back to about how to do a Google image search to find what you want. Remember, go to images.google.com, submit your search term, and then once you're on the results page on images.google.com, click Tools, Usage Rights, Creative Commons Licenses. Also a little fun fact, you can search by size in the tools there. If you look at the toolbar on the left, size. So I can actually search high resolution images and not have to worry about low resolution images getting caught up in the search. But you can always refer back to this page to walk yourself through how to do a Google image search. As for attribution, how to attribute that image, Here's a page that has the information you need that you can always refer back to. Uh, remember, Fergalan Afterglow by Lucas is licensed under the CC by ND 2.0 license, or you can simplify it and say the photo by Lucas and then just put the license in parentheses. Those are both acceptable ways to attribute an image. That Fergalan Afterglow is linked to the photo image page. The photographer name is linked to the photographer's profile page if there is one. And the license is linked to the Creative Commons license page. This is the perfect attribution and a way to honor the work of people who are sharing their work with you for free. So again, remember, go out there, find your images, attribute them, use them in your course. Have an amazing time having fun with your courses. And remember, if you need anything, you can always reach back out to DE. Uh, we have resources for you on Canvas as well. The Welcome to Canvas course, which you can uh, get to at that link. And of course, the DE a la carte page, which has a lot of resources to support you uh, as you build your courses. Thank you so much for listening.